Hey, so I wanted to make a video about the current state of Long Swordsman in the game now that we got a new patch that had Gambesons. So it's time to maybe reevaluate reevaluate where uh, the Long Swordsmen are uh, in terms of how they compete with Crossbowmen and Knights. So wouldn't it be fun to have a third gold unit that you could actually go for and be viable? Um, for most of Age of Empires, you pretty much couldn't go long swordsman ever because crossbone and um and knights were just way stronger but uh yeah we'll see if the new patch changed some things so first off let's look at all of the sieves that have a bonus for men or arms everything on the screen um basically has some kind of bonus be it a military bonus or an eco bonus um you know some some of these sieves they're gonna have uh just upgrade discounts. Um, some of them are going to have unit discounts. Well, Portuguese and Goss, I should say. And then some of them just have unit bonuses, which don't actually help you get to men at arms. Once you have them, then they're a bit stronger. The sieves that we're going to be focusing on today are going to be the ones that have upgrade discounts. We don't care about the unit bonuses ones because those are just going to be really situational. We're going to be looking at the numbers, see how expensive it is to tech into, and stuff like that. So let's take a look at all of the sieves that get a bonus here um so we've got bulgarians that have their 50 percent off food cost of the blacksmith techs and free men at arms and long swordsman upgrades so that's pretty useful um we've got kilts that have kind of functionally free squires they they don't research squires but they have uh, the faster movement speed just by default we've got dravidians that have the 50 percent off barracks techs which is pretty nice um malay got free infantry armor upgrades in the most recent patch Malians don't actually get anything other than that they have the pierce armor, which is kind of like free gamisons. It's like getting two gamisons text. So we're going to consider them here. Uh, we're going to consider them to kind of have like functionally free gamisons, just kind of kind of like Celts. Um, Slavs get free supplies and gamisons, which is a pretty nice save savings. Um, and then... The Spanish, they receive 20 gold per tech researched. And also their blacksmith techs don't cost gold. So also a pretty good sieve. Um, so the two sieves that have discounts are Portuguese and Goths. They are eh, okay, but they don't really have a lot going th for them other than this. The Portuguese, they don't even have squires. So don't get it in your head that Long Swordsman is going to be good for them. They have this slight four gold discount, but... Yeah, you'd rather be spamming knights or crossbowmen with the Portuguese. So the gold cost being higher allows Portuguese to uh, use their discount a little bit better. And on to the Goths. So Goths, they actually do have some discounts, you could say. So, of course, their units are discounted. Three food off, six gold off. It's something. Nine resources off. It's something. But um, Goths kind of they don't have to research supplies so they save 150 resources there and then they also get kind of uh free arson you could say so they get plus two against buildings in the castle age and that means they save 200 resources there but as we'll see later arson's really not that important of a tech to pick up it doesn't like i mean it's good to have obviously but it, it it's not a tech that you get excited about it's not a tech that you get early like you'd rather have more units um because of course attacking buildings buildings don't really fight back usually so uh yeah you just rather have more units so that you can fight the enemy army hopefully so anyways moving on let's take a look at all of the different upgrades that you can get for long swordsmen in the castle age so we've got the barracks techs um the infantry upgrades you know how how to actually upgrade the infantry and then we've got um the supplies and gamisons so gamisons is actually a uh upgrade that you get after supplies so you have to get supplies first and then gamisons is unlocked so um yeah it's just kind of interesting if you didn't know that and there's squires arson so there's six techs that you can get in the barracks which is kind of crazy that's a lot of techs um and then from the blacksmith we've got our four techs plus two uh attack and plus two armor so all of the costs are listed here if you add them all up we spend 675 food at the barracks um and uh 330 gold there and then 670 food 220 gold at the blacksmith so yeah that's 
how much you need to fully upgrade your infantry units or your longswordsmen, I should say, um, which is pretty expensive, but that's just generic. So the sieves that we talked about earlier, those are going to have some kind of discount. So let's go and take a look. So starting with generic, if we add everything up here, this is including arson. We're going to look at the numbers afterwards without arson because I really think that we can probably skip arson in a lot of cases. We still want to have full blacksmith techs and, and uh, full barracks other than arson. Um, but, you know, arson's 200 resources and it's, eh, it's kind of... You'd rather have a few more units a lot of the time. Uh, eventually you want to get it, but anyways. Uh, so for generic, adding everything up. 1,895 resources to fully upgrade your long swordsman. Um, and that's just to get started. You need to add units after that, too. So that uh, sounds pretty expensive. Celts get 100 off, so 17.95. Malians, they get 200 off for uh, basically free gambesons, so 16.95. Slavs, they have the free gambesons and free supplies, so they go down by 350 there, and that's going to be 15.45 for them. And then Malay with the free armor upgrades, they're going to be going down 400, down to 1495. And then Spanish is a little bit weird here. So this is assuming that you're researching 10 techs. So you're going to get 10 times 20 back, which is 200. So you get 200 gold refunded um, on all the techs that you pick up. And then their blacksmith techs are also uh, not costing them any gold. So you actually are uh, in a pretty good spot with Spanish in terms of the resources saved here when going for long swordsmen. And next up is Dravidians. So they have the half price barracks text. So everything is half price there. That works out to be 1394. And then last but not least, Bulgarians with the free men at arms upgrades or free men at arms, free long swordsmen. And then also the half price on the food techs from the blacksmith. Their blacksmiths work faster too, so it's actually really nice with them. Um, and they come in at 12.05, so that's some pretty big savings here. Um, so let's look at the numbers again with arson. You can just pause if you want to look at the numbers. It's just basically like 200 resources less on everything, except for Dravidians is a little bit... Uh, uh, they don't spend 200 on arson, so they they actually are only um, a little bit less than that. And then uh, the Spanish also, uh, it's not quite 200 because they get that discount, right? So anyways, let's take a look at all of the civilization's final upgrade costs without arson. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of see how many units we could produce with uh, the savings that we got from the uh, cheaper upgrades. So looking at all of the data here, you can see that Bulgarians come in at just over 10 free units, closer to 11 free units um, compared to generics. So if you do long swordsmen just with generic civ, you don't have any free units because uh, we're comparing to generic civ. But if you do it as Bulgarians, you kind of start with like, 10 or 11 free dudes which is pretty good um and all the other civs are kind of in between there now goths they do have that unit discount um but comparing the unit discount and the uh supplies or free supplies basically that goths get um it actually breaks even with bulgarians after 60 units are produced so I mean, Goths are pretty mid for spamming infantry in the in the mid game. Honestly, um, the only reason Goths are really good at spamming infantry in the mid game is because they have Huskerls. So against archers, you go Huskerls, and then um, you know against other stuff, you can go long swordsmen and and uh, pikes, and then they all take the same upgrades. So it's it's really nice. But uh, just going long swordsmen opening with Goths is actually not that good. Um, looking at the numbers anyways. We are going to take a look at how some units work um, against buildings. Because it, like one of the main advantages to playing long swordsmen is, of course, their damage against buildings. Um, you don't have the range like crossbowmen have, and you don't have mobility like knights have. So what do you have? You have bonus damage against buildings. 
And so some of these tests, um, we're going to take a look at how many long swordsmen you can get kind of along a, a flat building, like a 3x3 three three building. Um, for the long swordsmen, you can get eight comfortably attacking a 3x3 three three building if it's just as part of a wall. And with knights, you can get only six. So uh, already you can have more knight or more long swordsmen attacking compared to the knights. So that means that you're going to be able to do a little bit more damage with long swordsmen. And long swordsmen, they have 420 DPM damage per minute against buildings, whereas knights only have 300 against these buildings. Um, these buildings have two melee armor, so that's factored in. So that means that uh, with eight long swordsmen. It's going to take you 32 seconds to bring down the stable. Whereas with six knights, it's going to take you one minute, 60 seconds. So it's a pretty big difference. It's almost double the, um, the damage output from the long swordsman that you can actually have attacking the, the stable. So that's pretty good. Um, already we're off to a pretty good start. Let's take a look at just a ram versus a long swordsman taking it down. Um, you can see obviously the ram takes it down considerably faster than the long swordsman. And if we want to make it fairly even, we go four long swordsmen to one ram. And then the stable kind of comes down at about the same time. The long swordsmen do end up taking it down a little bit faster, but it's pretty close. So next up is one of the reasons why long swordsmen are just really not that good. And it's the fact that crossbowmen can actually take down palisade walls pretty much in the same speed as long swordsmen. So if you're taking down a wall, generally you can only really have three attacking it comfortably at once, like three long swordsmen, just because they're melee units. But you can have as many ranged units as you want attacking a palisade wall. Um, so it's pretty normal to have about 20 crossbowmen um, when you go for an attack in early castle age. So in this test, we compare three long swordsmen taking down walls compared to 20 crossbowmen killing walls. And, well, you kind of see that the crossbowmen take down the palisade walls in about the same time as the long swordsmen. So uh, long swordsmen are supposed to be better at taking down buildings, but mm, if the map is too big and you can't have house walls or like other building walls and you have to rely on some palisade walls crossbowmen are just as good at taking down buildings and the thing is is that crossbowmen can also deal with repairing villagers or villagers that are walling behind because they have range so not only can you get in just as fast as long swordsmen you can also prevent the rewall behind so crossbowmen have a lot of potential to um, just break buildings and then do a ton of damage with their range. So kind of insane. We'll be talking a little bit about some proposed changes later, but uh, that will include some uh, Palisade wall buffs, hopefully. Uh, or at least that's my idea. Next up is going to be some Long Swordsman versus um, like Rams against the TC. So in this test, we've got five Long Swordsmen taking down a TC uh, versus one Ram taking down the TC. And as you can see, they're pretty evenly matched. The Ram loses just a little bit. So the, the Ram is worth about like, you know, four and a half, um, roughly, Long Swordsmen taking down the TC. Now, one thing you might ask is, uh, what about garrisoning infantry in the Ram? That gives them extra bonus damage. Well, yeah, uh, garrisoning each infantry unit gives 10 bonus damage to the ram when garrisoned. So four long swordsmen inside a ram will do uh, whatever the ram does. I think it's like 125 damage per hit or something like that, uh, plus 10 for each long swordsman. So um, the individual long swordsmen actually do more damage outside of the ram to the TC, but. Say that you have a composition of long swordsmen and pikemen. Actually, pikemen garrisoned in rams will do more DPS overall to the TC than on the outside. So, if you have this composition, long swordsmen and pikemen, if you garrison the pikemen in the rams, that is how you're going to do the most DPS when you go to take down an enemy TC. So, just a nice little uh, tidbit of information for you there. Last but not least we're going to take a look at the effectiveness of arson. And unfortunately, it's just really not that great. 
Um, eight long swordsmen taking down a stable is like 32, 34 seconds, somewhere around there. And with arson, or without arson, it is closer to like 39 seconds, maybe like 37 to 39 seconds. Depends on how, how fast you get the units around there. But, you know, it's really like a five second difference. It's like you spend 200 resources to get in five seconds faster. Uh, I don't know. It's not really the most appealing upgrade, in my opinion. Um, obviously, like when you go to take down the TC, you want to probably have it because town centers actually have more melee armor. So town centers have five melee armor and most other buildings have uh, two melee armor in Castle Age. So plus two is proportionally more important against higher melee armor targets, of course. Um, so yeah, when you're taking down the TC, probably a good time to get arson. But before you take go to take down the enemy TC, you probably should just skip arson and get more units. It's going to be better. Um, so yeah, those are all the building tests. Let's take a look at the next things, which are going to be looking at the cost to upgrade knights and the cost to upgrade crossbowmen. So looking at the knight upgrades, we have bloodlines, husbandry from the stable, and then two, two upgrades from the blacksmith. So pretty simple, nothing too fancy here. And that comes out to 1,070 food and 370 gold. Uh, for a total of 1,440 resources to fully upgrade your knights in Castle Age. For Crossbowmen, we have quite a few more upgrades. Um, two of them kind of being more utility. Well, I mean, bal Ballistics is the only utility. Thumb Ring does increase your DPS by increasing your um, attack rate. So, anyways. Um, we've got Crossbowmen and Thumb Ring from the archery range. And then 2-2 two -two upgrades from the Blacksmith. And then Ballistics from the University. So, um, in this... Ballistics, of course, only costs 300 wood, but I'm going to factor in the 200 wood cost for the university because you get the university to get ballistics. Like, you don't get a university for really anything else at this stage of the game, like early crossbowmen, um, getting your upgrades for crossbowmen. So we're going to factor that into the cost of uh, getting ballistics, the university cost, that is. So in the end, we uh, the total cost for all the crossbowmen upgrades is 1,025 food, 550 gold, and 750 wood, which uh, gives a total of 2,220, or sorry, 2,325 resources total. So, um, with that said, let's take a look at the comparison between the three units. We've got knights at 1440, crossbowmen at 2325, and long swordsman without arson at 1695 so it kind of looks like crossbowmen are pretty expensive but the thing is is that you don't need all of the upgrades for crossbowmen to be good that's the problem so crossbowmen they they have range just by default of course and knights they have mobility just by default now what do long swordsmen have they have bad stats they're not very strong they are slow. They don't have range. Like, they're kind of just bad. So you really need to get a bunch of upgrades for them. And the thing is, is that since long swordsmen are quite a bit cheaper than knights, they're kind of like half price to knights, every upgrade feels like you're getting kind of two upgrades for them compared to knight upgrades. So it just kind of demonstrates how upgrades for long swordsmen are so much more important to get. Um, compared to something like a knight who already has higher stats. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look at some upgrades that you can skip, basically. So, for knights, you could skip iron casting, you could skip forging, and that brings the cost down quite a bit. You could skip plus two for a while, too. So, actually, to get started with knights, you really only need husbandry and bloodlines and maybe plus one armor. And that's 550 resources, so pretty cheap, actually. So it's really no problem just skipping most of the upgrades for knights, and you just get knights, and knights have good stats to start, so no problem. Um, 550 resources, super cheap, but the thing is, is that you can't mass them on the way to Castle Age. So the other two units, archers and longswordsmen, you can mass them on the way to Castle Age, so you can have a mass already going. Um, 
Whereas for knights, you have to get started producing them in Castle Age. So that's kind of one of the drawbacks of knights. Um, and just for comparison, we have Bulgarian's fully upgraded knights costing 1,055 resources. So uh, Bulgarians, of course, they have discounts on long swordsmen, but they also have discounts on the knight line. So we can't really forget that. So um, yeah, we'll think about that later. So moving on to the crossbowmen. Generic is, of course, very, very expensive. Uh, but you can skip a lot of upgrades to make crossbowmen still useful or to still have them useful. So without armor... We go down to 1975. Um, without armor and thumb ring, or or thumb ring, this would be with ballistics. So this is if you're hitting like a ballistics time, you don't really need armor. Um, so this would be like uh, ballistics and bodkin arrow and crossbow and upgrade. So 1425, still pretty expensive, but uh, you can do a lot of damage with that timing. And no armor or ballistics, so this would be just with thumb ring. Bodkin Arrow and Crossbowman Upgrade. Um, and that's going to be good against, say, like Knights or Eagle Warriors. You might want to get plus one armor, but uh, anyway, so you can add 100 to that if you want. These are just some examples. And then no armor, thumb ring, or ballistic. So this is going to be the cheapest timing that you can hit and the most popular timing because look at the price. It's 750 resources to get Fletching, Bodkin Arrow, and Crossbowman. And that's all you really need on Crossbowman to do major damage to the opponent. If you just mark it up, um, you get to Castle Age super quickly, you spend 750 resources to get these upgrades, and you just dominate. Like, this this unit is insane for what uh, what the cost is. So, anyways, moving on to the Long Swordsman here. Uh, generic fully upgraded, 1695, pretty darn expensive but you kind of need all of these upgrades uh when i say fully upgraded here i mean without arson as well so anyways um got a little icon there uh you could go across the map with just plus one one from the blacksmith uh this is with gambesons um 1055 and without gambesons it's 855 which is fairly reasonable but the thing is is that the men-at-arms are really not that useful in feudal age at the moment so you're not really going to have a mass from feudal age because if you mass them in feudal age well it's going to delay your castle age timing and then you, you just kind of die to the crossbowman anyways so it's like you kind of need to get to full upgrades before you actually launch an assault with long swordsmen because they just kind of feel really bad without all of the upgrades so it's just really expensive to get to um and then I listed the numbers for fully upgraded Slavs without arson and fully upgraded Bulgarians without arson. Um, Slavs is kind of just like in the middle, and then Bulgarians is by far the best men at arms or long swordsman sieve in terms of resources wise getting into it. So next up, let's take a look at just the just a little summary um, when the unit becomes functional. So for long swordsmen, one one without gambesons. This is with squires basically. Uh, squires and supplies, and then the men at arms and long swords and upgrade. 855, pretty cheap to get them started, but they're not really that useful, except for maybe like mm, you could kind of go forward, maybe get a forward siege workshop, but against crossman, it's just really not going to be any good. And knights are still going to dominate them, so you really need to mass units. But you know, you, you could spend 855 on the upgrades while you mass units and then get the 2 2 upgrades, Gambesons on the way to the uh, across the map or something like that. You could make that play work. So, you know, getting into them, 855 minimum, but you're really going to be spending 1695 for sure on them. Uh, crossbowman, the unit becomes functional as soon as you have bullet, uh, sorry, Bodkin Arrow, Fletching, um, and Crossbowman upgrade, which is 750. So you can keep pumping upgrades into them and they become better but like you can hit that crossbowman timing and then transition into knights you could go for um like whatever whatever else without thumb ring without ballistics uh you could just boom which is probably the most common thing so you don't actually have to make that big of an investment so thinking about long swordsman like you don't just go for that 855 resources and then stop making units, stop making upgrades because they're going to do something. You have to actually eventually add the 1695 resource, aka fully upgraded, before you actually attack. So that's before you start booming as well. Whereas with Crossbowman, you invest 750 resources for upgrades, you have your units from Feudal Age, and then you just boom. And like you have a functional army 
while booming. Whereas Long Swordsman, you kind of have to go like one TC all in almost because your boom is going to be late. Because, I mean, if you start adding TCs while you don't even have all of your upgrades, you don't even have units together, it's just kind of pointless to add those units because they don't do anything. Whereas Crossbowman, you hit that timing, you add the TCs, no problem. Kind of the same with Knights. You can make a few Knights. They're still going to be functional at 550 resources, which is just like... Uh, husbandry, bloodlines, and plus one armor. You can still run them around, um, even against crossbowmen. You, you never really taken a fight, but you can like pick off units here and there, tap walls, stuff like that, while you add TCs. So you can kind of go for this lower military investment with knights while adding TCs, no problem. But you can get up to like um, basically 1,100 resources, which is second armor and plus one which is the most normal so this this uh 1100 number is just fully upgraded without iron casting which is pretty reasonable like you don't have to get iron casting uh anytime uh early so really 1100 resources is kind of what you're looking at to get decently upgraded knights um which is quite a bit cheaper than long swordsman and remember you have mobility you have just strong units um, knights are pretty strong. They just, uh, don't allow you to kill buildings as fast, but that's completely fine because you're using mobility to run around, pick off units, take map control, stuff like that. Whereas long swordsmen, you really have to go all in with long swordsmen because they're so expensive to get into. So your boom is so delayed that if you try and add TCs after doing the long swordsman thing, um, it's, it's really not going to work. It's really like too expensive to play kind of economic. So Yeah. Let's move on to the next one, which is my proposed changes. So after all that, we've looked at all of the numbers and some of my conclusions here. I mean, these are just changes that I thought of. You can discuss in the comments if they're any good or they're stupid or whatever. But uh, these are kind of some of the things that I came up with. So I think that arson is just really Mm, not very good for its cost so i would say that we're gonna want to have like plus three on arson instead of plus two just that's slightly better um uh, like if it's slightly better it's gonna be a lot more value for for what you pay so i think plus three might might actually be a lot better um moving squires to feudal age would be super cool so just like the main reason why we can't mass men-at-arms in the Feudal Age is that they're outsped by archers and skirmishers. Like, they're outsped by every unit. Like, they're outsped by archers, skirmishers, spearmen, and scouts. That's every unit in the Feudal Age. Every military unit. And, and I mean, they're outsped by wheelbarrow bills as well, I think. So, <laughs> it's like, uh... Mm. Yeah, they're, they're just too slow. You you can't do anything with them, because they're not tanky enough, because they still die to... They'll even die to skirms. Um... And then they have no mobility, so they can't force any fights. So, um, yeah. Another problem with men-at-arms is that they don't take down buildings fast enough. So, another change that I would suggest is potentially reducing the repair rate for the first villager. So, the first villager, when repairing, repairs at 750 HP per minute. And then any additional villagers add 375 HP per minute. Now, if you just reduce the repair rate for the first villager down to that 375 HP per minute, it would only change the early game repairs. Because, like, the the main thing that you'd be concerned about with this change would be when you're, like, repairing a castle, right? So, with this change, if the first villager just also did 375 HP per minute, it would mean that you need one additional villager to have the same repair rate on castles uh, for later. So it wouldn't really change much in that um, that sort of situation, repairing the castles, but it would change a lot in the early game in terms of just, it's so easy to repair anything. So, um, like, yeah, it, it's just that um, men-at-arms would be stronger and longswordsmen would be stronger with this change. You would actually have to have, like, two villagers repairing instead of just one. So you'd have to plan your walls out a little bit better. Now this one, it might be too strong like for palisade walls. So, you know, like say that you wall in your berries um, and you just need one villager to repair the palisade against like four men at arms. It, yeah, you might not actually be able to do that. So 
it could turn the game into a men at arms fest so i'm not 100 percent sure on this change but reducing the repair rate maybe buffing palisade wall melee armor could help um something like that some numbers could be adjusted but i think reducing the repair rate for the first villager would be uh, a good idea um in general other changes would be shuffling the upgrade costs of crossbone and thumb ring so Overall, it would be the same price, but just, just adjusting some things, because you get so much value out of Crossbowman upgrade, and it's like an instant buy on Castle Age anyways, so just making it a bit more expensive would be good, but you don't want to, um, you don't want to make things too expensive for, uh, Crossbowman, like, fully upgraded, so I propose increasing the food and gold cost by 50 each on Crossbowman, and then reducing the thumb ring cost by uh, 100 food so it's like you take 100 resources from um thumb ring and put them on crossbowman upgrade so this would indirectly buff uh cavalry archers as well um but my next change kind of addresses that because we don't really want to buff cavalry archers or like change cavalry archers with this it's not really the intention here um but yeah the next change would be increasing bod canero price so increasing that by another 50 food and 50 gold so the thing is is that you get so much value out of archer attack upgrades because it gives range and attack to towers and castles and it gives attack to town centers and then also it gives range and attack to all of your um range units so uh, kind of insane value so making bodkin arrow just a little bit more expensive i think is probably a good idea so in total that would be 200 more resources getting to that that uh, early cross one timing which is kind of good because that's just going to hurt the the boom behind it which that's the main thing is that it, it shouldn't be so easy to just go for early cross one timing and then just boom very easily behind it these next two changes are a little bit more radical but as i have been saying like that early cross one timing is what makes them really really strong and just pushing that back a little bit or giving them some more text that they need to research would probably help um, alleviate some of these issues. So it's not necessarily that long swordsmen are bad. It's just that crossbowmen are so good to go for that there's no reason to go long swordsman because the opponent's always just going to go crossbowmen. So the first one would be that um, you could add a new tech in the archery range that adds a range, like one range to archer and skirmisher lines. And it would be like 75 food, 75 gold, not too expensive. Um, but both the crossbone and elite skirm upgrade give plus one range. So what if you had just a separate tech that gave the range? And then the those upgrades gave uh, whatever they give. Um, I think that that could be kind of interesting. Uh, and then another tech in the archery range that would increase the movement speed of archers and skirmishers. So this would be like squires for the archer and skirmisher lines. So you would have... In Feudal Age, archers and skirmishers being a little bit slower, and then you'd get a tech in Castle Age that would increase their speed to what they're at now. So this would kind of conflict with Feudal Squires. Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't make both of these changes. So it's like either put Squires in Feudal Age or add some new movement tech. Um, you wouldn't want to have, like, infantry being so much faster than the ranged units in, in Feudal Age, but just, like... Um, kind of how it is right now is infantry with squires are just slightly faster than castle age, uh, or than archers and skirmishers. But, um, anyways, it, those two new texts that I propose, they're, they're pretty radical, as I said. So, um, yeah, g give me your feedback on those in the comments. And the final change that I have here is increasing palisade wall pierce armor to six. So, crossbowmen do 7 damage. Palisade walls, they have 5 pierce armor, which is why crossbowmen can shred through them so quickly. All you have to do is increase palisade wall pierce armor by 1, and then suddenly, crossbowmen don't just break in the base and win the game, uh, like so many games in early castle age. And this might even be the only change that needs to happen, actually, is if you can buy a bit more time against crossbowmen, that early crossbowman timing isn't going to be as deadly. Uh, and maybe increase the the pierce armor of Palisade Gates as well. Because, like, 
Palisade Gates are such a weak structure to ranged units for some reason. Like, they only have two Pierce Armor. So Crossbow and get in there super, super quickly. Um, and it just feels, like, not very balanced. Like, you, you never really want to make a Palisade Gate against somebody who's going to go for Crossbow. Because he's just going to get in and win the game. So with all of these changes, we can take a look at what the numbers would be in the end here. If squires was made a bit cheaper like down to 75 resources uh it would go like between 830 resources to 100 or 1670 resources to to kind of make long swordsman work uh eventually you'd want to get fully upgraded so all the resources but it would boost or it would bump crossbowman up to like 950 resources to get started so that would be with crossbowman and bodkin arrow and then 1200 resources for the movement tech and the extra range tech. So the thing is, is with the range tech, it's like crossbone would still be pretty much just as good with just six range against most things. It's just like you would still want to eventually get it, but like you could still hit a timing without it. So it's not like it would be necessary to pick up right away, but it's still like a good tech to have. Um, and of course this would apply to elite skirmishers as well. And then knights are, I didn't have any knight changes. So I think knights are fine. So yeah, anyways. Send me some messages in the comments. Tell me what you think. I know that the discussion about making Long Swordsman viable will probably rage on forever. But uh, anyways, hopefully this was at least entertaining.